Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printer here. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to write a left outer join query using Flask SQL Alchemy. So if you've watched my videos on Flask SQL Alchemy before, then you know that I cover the typical cases. So basically just how to perform very simple select statements using the Flask SQL Alchemy RM. And those are great, but sometimes you want a little more flexibility in the results that you can get. So in this video, I'll cover how to get results in the form of a left outer join. And in future videos, I'll cover other ways to get results, but in this video, I'll just concentrate on left outer join or a left join. So before I get into this, I do have a free course on my website that covers Flask SQL Alchemy in depth. It kind of walks you through a lot of the common things that you can do. This video or a variation of it will eventually end up in the new version of the course when I update it. So it might be done by the time you watch this video. So you can check it out. But the idea is this course is going to teach you the things that you need to know to use Flask SQL Alchemy. So now to get into the code, uh, what I want to do is I want to create a very, a very basic app to interface with this database that I have here. So let me just show you the database that I have. It's a SQLite database, test.db, and it has two tables in it. It has a customer table, and it has a purchase table. So as you can imagine, uh, you have customers who purchase something multiple times. In this case, uh, the first three customers, Anthony, Sarah, and Carlos have made purchases, and then Penny hasn't made any purchases. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is so you can see uh, how the left join works. So I want to see that Penny hasn't made any purchases. So for the Flask app, what I'll do is I'll create a very simple Flask app. It's not going to have any routes. It's just going to allow me to interface with the database using Flask SQL Alchemy. So from Flask, import Flask, and then I'll import Flask SQL Alchemy as well. And then instantiate the app. And then I will set the configuration for the database. So app config uh, SQL Alchemy database URI is going to be equal to SQLite and then the name of my database is test.db. And then I need to instantiate Flask SQL Alchemy by passing in the app. And then I want to create the two tables or the two models that represent the two tables that I have. So one is going to be customer, customer, and here it's from db.model. And it's going to have two columns. It's going to have an integer column called ID, that is the primary key. And then it's going to have a name column that represents the name of the person. And let's just say it's 50 characters. So obviously a real customer table would probably have more information about the customers. But since this is just an example, I'm going to keep these models very simple. And then purchase has three columns. So the first is going to be a primary key. The second is going to be a customer ID. So this represents the customer who made the purchase. And this is going to be foreign keyed back to the customer table. So customer.id. And finally, there's going to be a price column representing how much they paid for whatever they purchased. Okay. So I have the basic model down, but since there is a relationship, I can add the relationship here. So I'll call this orders equals DB relationship. It's going to be related to the purchase table. And then the back reference is going to be called customer. Okay, so that is enough for the models. So now let me go into my console so we can start working with this. And before I get into that, let me write a query to kind of do what I'm thinking about doing. So I want to write a left join. So here in SQLite, I can do select star from customer, left join, or left outer join, it doesn't really matter which one you use. But let's just say left join. I'm going to left join purchase on customer.id equals purchase.customerid. So I'm connecting the two tables uh, across the customer. And now when I do this, I get all the purchases for each customer. 
So I have Anthony and he has five. Sarah has six. Carlos has four and Penny has none. And you see here with Penny, the values are empty. So now let me go to my Python REPL and I'll import, let's say from app import DB customer and purchase. And I need to start up my shell. So pip him. And then what I'll do is I'll start up Python again. So from app import DB customer and purchase. And then what I'm going to do is first I'll show you how I can get the purchases for a particular customer. So if I do customer dot orders, or I should say customer dot query dot all. So this gives me all the customers. So I'll assign this to a variable called customers. And then if I look at the first customer, so customers is zero, that gives me Anthony. And if I type orders, I get all the orders for Anthony. And that's great, but perhaps I wanted to get all the information at the same time, like I did when I wrote the query in SQLite. So to do that, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to write kind of a custom query in Flash SQL Alchemy, although it's not raw SQL, it's just I can't use the customer class directly. So instead what I'll do is I'll type db.session.query and what this is doing is it's allowing me to write any kind of query that I want that SQL Alchemy can support, of course. And in this case, I want to write a query to join uh, two tables. So I'm going to leave this part blank because this part is like the select statement. And then I'm going to join the purchase table to customer table. So I'm going to write, um, let's see, outer join. So outer join is a left join. It's just kind of a shorthand for it. Well, actually this is a little longer, but just think of outer join in this case as a left join, as you would expect. And then I'm going to join the order table. So let's pretend I'm starting from the customer table and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But I'm going to be joining the order table and then I need to specify the condition that they're joined on. And like I did in the custom query, it was on customer. So customer.id is equal to order dot customer dot ID. And then I'll just add the all to give me all the results. So what's going on here is first I need to go back here and I'll add customer and then I'll add order. So now this makes a little more sense. So the customer here is the main table that I'm concerned with, and then I'll be joining order. And because I've joined order, I then have access to get all the orders that I want here. So db.session.query, query the customer table, join the order table, and give me the results from customer in order on this condition, customer ID equals order.customer ID. And that should be underscore instead of a dot here. Okay, and there's a double equal sign because I'm writing Python here. It's not a single equal sign like SQL. So I'll run the query. And now it tells me order is not defined, and that's because I'm thinking of order and purchase. So it's the same thing, even though I just used the wrong name. It's purchase, not order. So let's just do that. I originally thought of this example using the order table, but order is kind of a keyword in SQL. So it would have been better if I would change it. So I change it to customer. Okay, so now if I do this, I get this data. So let me show you that again. So now what I have is a list of tuples. So in the tuple we see the first part of the tuple is a customer and the second part of the tuple is a purchase. So if I wanted to loop through these results, I'll assign them to a variable and I would just call this variable R for results and then I'll loop through. So for results in R, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print some stuff. So print uh, name and then amount paid. So we know the name is on the customer table and the purchase is on the, or the price is on the purchase table. So amount paid, I'm going to have results 
And then remember it's a tuple. So for the customer's name, I'm looking at the first result of the tuple. And then I'm going to type dot name. And then for the, this should be format. For the price or the amount paid, it's going to be in the second part of the tuple. So result dot one and then price. And let's see if everything looks okay there. Close out the second parenthesis. And now if I look here, I see name Anthony amount paid is five and then 15, 20, 23 and so on. So we see all of the amounts paid for each of the purchases that the individual made. But we get this error down here telling me that none type object has no attribute price. And the reason why this fails is because if you look at the last one, so customer four, customer four is penny and penny doesn't have any purchases. So for the tuple, it returns none because there's no purchase object to return for a penny. So to handle that case, I'll just write the same loop again. But instead of going directly to printing the name and everything, what I'll do is I'll put an if statement here, checking to see if the price exists. So if results of one, so if that actually exists, what I want to do is I want to print it. And if it doesn't exist, then don't do anything. And now we see I have all the information that I want and penny is no longer there. So just depending on how you want it to display, uh, you're going to have to check and see if none is passed in. And uh, one quick thing before I end the video is when you write these queries, you don't have to use the name of the classes. You can instead reference sp specific columns. So right now, if I do this, I get a customer object and a purchase object. But if I wanted to get, let's say the name of the customer and the price directly, so name and then price. I would just do it like that. So customer dot name and purchase dot price. And then when I run this, I get the information directly. So I see Anthony paid five on this purchase, pay 15 on this purchase and so on. And we see Penny has no purchases and you see Carlos and Sarah have their purchases. So using left joins is pretty easy. You just have to know to use the outer join, mention the table that you want to join to and the join condition. So it's pretty similar to the raw SQL. It's just the syntax is a bit different, but the ideas are the same. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, like I said, if you want to learn more about Flash SQL Alchemy in kind of a progressive manner, you can check out my Flash SQL Alchemy basics course. Like I said, it's free on my site. I'll have a link to it in the description below. If you have any questions about what I've done in this video, you can leave a comment down below and I'll get to it. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.